Good morning and happy Friday, everyone. Thank you for joining Snap and Rack's webinar. Today we are covering RL Universal, the configuration tool. We will be doing a live demonstration of it. Uh, we're going to give everyone a minute or two here to join. That, that case, they might be joining from another meeting or so. Give everyone a minute, um, then we'll get started here. So hang tight and we'll get started. Good morning, everyone. For those of you that are just joining us, we have our Snap and Rack webinar of the week. Today we are covering RL Universal Configuration Tool. We will be doing a live demonstration of the tool. This morning we have Barry Hughesby from our Snap and Rack Applications Engineering team. He will be going through the tool with us. Uh, and so we will be giving the presenter role over to you now, Barry. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Okay. And we can see your here. screen too. Awesome. I can only remember how to do this stuff here. There we go. All right, welcome everybody. Uh, again, my name's Barry Hughesby. I'm one of the applications engineers here at Snap and Rack. Um, and today we're going to focus on um, our new uh, rail system, which is uh, RL Universal. Uh, I'm just going to go through a couple of, uh, going to run through the tool. We'll, we'll do a couple different um, arrays and different configurations. I'll explain some of the stuff, um, you know, some of the some of the ins and outs of the system and, and what sort of parts you're going to need. Uh, and uh, and how to get that into your bill of materials. Uh, and I'll go through a couple different arrays. Um, and then uh, at the end, I'll go through where to find information on the system itself, like installation manuals and drawings and uh, you know other information. So uh, after that, I can answer a couple questions. So uh, again, if you do have a question or if something pops into your head while I'm in the middle of the presentation, go ahead and type your question in and uh, either I can answer them at the end or Jill feel free, feel free to interrupt if it's a, a relevant question that I need to clarify at that moment. Okay, so first, um, one thing about using our tool is that um, you're going to want to start with uh, our website. The reason, um, we start on the website is sometimes we, you know, make updates to our tools, uh, software updates or, you know, some fixes. And uh, if you've bookmarked the page, you might end up with um, an older version of the tool that won't be functional. So make sure you start on the website. Uh, at the top of the page, you can see the word configurator. Um, if you click on that, it gives you our different tools and you would choose, of course, RL Universal. Brings you to the first page. Um, so uh, start off again by um, just you enter in all the things into the boxes that you need to. Uh, if you have any questions about what to put in to any of these boxes, we do have these little information pop-ups. Uh, you click on the question mark and it uh, explains what you need to answer. Okay, so first we uh, have our um, our solar company, which is Solar Bum, and the project is uh, let's call it my house. Um, 
the next step would be oh so sorry so um also the your company name and the project name these will appear in the final bill of material so make sure you you know you have in there what you want it to look like um next choose a module there is a limited number of modules that have been approved uh for our system one of the reasons is that there well there's two reasons one is you have to get approval from the module manufacturer you know that you're allowed to use it as a rail system uh and then it needs to be you know tested and approved and whatnot but uh, we do have these there are more coming um if you don't find what you're looking for on this list then uh, make sure you reach out to us and we can see about getting them tested and approved okay so we're going to choose rec the 292p2 black um right now all our hardware is black so um if you're planning on using silver frame modules then uh things will look kind of funny with silver frame modules and black hardware next is the building code um there's uh there was a change in the 2018 building code from previous building codes to make sure you know uh which one you're working with uh for simplicity's sake right now we're going to use the 2015 building code choose your exposure category it does give a little description of what each exposure category means so if you choose one it gives you a different description um for this uh for this purpose we're going to choose exposure category b which basically means you know in town not out in a prairie or next to the ocean um and so I don't have any particular area in mind. Uh, we can look at we can look at like a typical California um, installation. So we have a snow load of zero. Now with the 2015 building code, it starts at 105 mile an hour winds. If you were to choose, you know, 2018, this might be different. Although it didn't change there, that might just be for the other tool. All right. So we're going to choose 110 miles an hour. 2015 building code is zero snow. So this would be like your classic California raptor spacing, 24 inches. Uh, roof type comp shingle. Uh, this is what we have right now. We don't have any other uh, way to attach the RLU system to um, other roof surfaces. We do have other um, options coming, uh, but those are still a ways out. So the roof attachment, um, it's sort of a, uh, you're sort of repeating yourself here, but yeah, we only have um, really the flat, the comp uh, option, but you can choose uh, different flashing, uh, either galvanized or, or galvalume, sorry, or aluminum in different, uh, different colors. Typically it's gonna be your uh, black uh, aluminum flashing. Staggering roof attachments, um, some jurisdictions and especially in snow country will, um, require that you stagger the roof attachments, meaning you, you're not putting all, you know, all your roof attachments on the same rafter um, and spreading the load. Uh, it's not necessarily a requirement in California, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. I'll do that on a subsequent uh, design, but we'll just kind of go with, first we'll go with the real simple design. Microverters and uh, optimizers. Um, you would just choose one of these two. Uh, we don't have anything uh, uh, any further detail there. This is basically just adding a uh, microinverter attachment kit. Um, and that uh, microinverter attachment kit attaches to the panel and attaches the microinverter to the panel itself before you mount it on the roof. Um, junction boxes. So these would be mounted, they, they actually are deck mounted junction boxes um, that are really useful for your array. There, we have the smaller junction box and the and the XL. Uh, this is going to be a small array, so I'm just choosing the small junction box. And uh, you can either do a custom uh, entry, and you would put that number in here, or you can do uh, a one per subarray, which is typically what you'd do. Wire management clips. These can be auto calculated, or again, you can do a custom order or none. Um, these wire management clips are, you know, they're how you keep the wires off the roof. Um, and there you know, are our, our um, smart clips um, that you basically, they, they clip the wires up to the module frame as you, as, you lay the wire, uh, as you lay the modules down. I'm not gonna get into installation, really. I'm just sort of explaining um, what these things are. Wire savers, um, 
Oh, I don't have a thing for wire savers, huh? Where'd it go? Oh, here it is. Uh, wire savers help secure the PV wires that have fallen underneath the array. Okay, so I'm not gonna get any wire savers today. Maybe next time. Although I'd say, I would say if you are installing RL, you're gonna want you know bags of wire management clips, bags of wire savers, okay, in your truck, um, just in case. All right, I'm not gonna choose any wire savers or flash track spacers. Flash track spacers are, um, you use these when you have a really wavy roof, you know, like a dip in the roof, an older roof, um, and you, you need to get it level, but you can't you can't level it out with the, you know, it takes, it's gonna be more than an inch and a half of variation. So you use a flash track spacer to add some. All right, so we've entered in all our information. We've verified our module dimensions. We're gonna move on. All right, the next step would be hit configure array button. Brings you to our terms of service warning, basically says, you know, we can't, uh, we don't take any liability over whether you in, put the right uh, information in or not. And continue. All right, so here we are with our uh, first array. So it gives you the options to, uh, I'm sorry, it shows you um, a little, uh, basically this is how you, how you enter in your array. So the first array we're gonna do, it's gonna be a landscape array. Um, and we've got three rows and the longest row is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine modules. All right. So we have number of rows is three, number of modules is nine. We're in landscape. The roof pitch we're saying is, uh, let's say, let's call it 24. And here it tells you what the attachment spacing is. So if you're going in portrait, it's gonna be 48. If you're going in landscape, it's gonna be 72. You do have the option to override this. Let's say you're, you're really scared and you wanna go more. So you could choose 24 for portrait or for landscape, oh, that's spelled wrong. Um, I could get, uh, I'm gonna go with 72, because that's, I wanna maximize my uh, my spans, especially in California, so 72 is a good number. Um, ridge mounts are, if your modules are, the top row of your modules is getting within a certain distance of the peak of the roof, um, you know, you can't get the flashing up underneath the peak, so, um, you choose ridge mounts, and so for all the top rows of your array, you'll get um, extra, it's basically an extra bar, which um, extends the the attachment up to the uh, up to the ridge. And this feature here is the array near a hip or valley. Um, I can show you what this looks like. Um, oops. So what this is asking is it's asking. Um, if there's a hip or a valley, and then what it'll do, it'll actually match it. So if we, this is just for fun here, I'm gonna go back and fix this. So you see it, it lines it up. So if there was another roof that was going off in this direction, it basically aligns with the angle of that roof. Okay, so now I say, oh, I made a mistake. I didn't wanna do that. Um, you can always go back to array details and you can say, okay, I don't, I don't want to do um, hip or valley, okay. And then you save it again, it brings you back. So now you have a standard block, um, but we need to manipulate it again to look like um, our array. So our top one is one, two, three, four, five. All right, so to, um, to change what we have here, you select a module and you can, you can either say it's an interior edge or a corner module, or you can remove it. Okay, so, or you can rotate it too, but we're gonna just remove this one. We're gonna remove this one. One, two, three, four, five, right? And actually, you can actually select um, multiple modules by, you first you select one module, and then you select the next module in a row, and you can select that, um, selects all of them, and then you can, you can change them 
to a corner or whatever, or you can remove them. Okay, and that was five, right? Oops. Okay, and so lining them up, you can see I need to be lined up about halfway to that second module. So um, you can move the modules around. So here I can I can select a module and I can move it around. Right, so we want it to be somewhere like around halfway, right around there. Now I got this gap. Well, you could also, if you select the module on the farthest side, they'll push the other modules. Then oh, then we ran into it, and it'll keep pushing it if you keep going that way in that direction, only to a certain distance. Right now it came that far because there's these ghost modules here from our previous uh, setup. So you can also select all or you can select part of them and move them. Okay, we we're right around there is where we want to be. Okay, and that one was like that, and let's look at the last one. It's all the way, almost to the end of the first. And I'll remove them. And remember that's a shift. Uh, it tells you right up here, shift and click to select multiple uh, modules in a row. You can't go up and down multiple rows, but you can go um, just a lot. Uh, sorry, up and down. You can't like select uh, in a column. You can only select in a row. Okay, then it goes all the way to that one. All right, so you can see I made a mistake. I needed to keep this one. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to call it an interior. So here we are with our first array that we just did. Um, I think it matches pretty close to what we have there. And now we're not really sure whether what we did works or not. Um, so what we can do is you hit uh, validate, or if you want to, you can go back and modify your previous project details that we started with here, remember? So that's one of the options you can do. Configure arrays, continue, or back to our uh, back to our plan. Um, one thing you can do, you can either continue straight onto the bill of materials, or you can uh, validate this. And so, what uh, what validate means is you click it, and it tells you where your attachments are and where your links are located. Um, the links are what uh, bond module to module provide a little bit of structural stability and the mounts, of course, are what holds it up on the roof. Uh, it gives you the locations, um, and it uh, looks like everything looks good here. If there was an error, you would see that in some place it would, uh, like a, a module would be highlighted red. So you see right here it's blue, but it'll be red, and it's indicating that there's a problem with that module. Typically, it's too much cantilever, right? If you have a high snow load condition, um, your cantilever is not very great, and if it, you know, if you have 24 inches and you're, you know, it's cantilevered 20 inches out or something, it, you know, it's going to highlight that and say that's not working. And you can come back in here, you can shift modules around to try to resolve that. All right, so we validated our array. It looks pretty good. It tells us what these different things are. And again, if we had chosen ridge mounts, these top green circles would have been the uh, yellow triangles. All right, so it looks like we're ready to move on. We calculate a bill of materials. Um, this page is sort of a review. So remember, it's the we're uh, our company's called Solar Bomb. It's on my house. Um, all of our code, all this, basically all the stuff that we entered in the module gives us a little rundown of how many modules we have on on which array, uh, a bill of materials. Um, the, what the array looks like, what each row has in it. Okay, and again, this is like this is just sort of a rundown of everything. Gives us some design results and what the engineering said. Um, and then we get down to the bottom. Again, this is all review because we can always re create a uh, a report. So um, so if we open up the Excel uh, bomb.
All right, we got our um, project summary. Again, this is all the stuff that we entered in before. The bill of materials, this is all in Excel. And the subarray. And subarray details, engineering details, et cetera. Okay, and if we export to PDF, we'll get a different report. And PDF report is pretty useful for if you're going to like a you know an HJ for submitting to it, it's more a little more official coming from us than a Excel sheet, which you can change. Um, again, the beginning, uh, the first page is just all our uh, our general information. It also gives an array summary, so you can have up to ten subarrays here. So this could be listed all out with ten different subarrays. Your bill of materials. Um, and an array page, uh, a racking layout. And again, your company name is here, your project name, um, all you know, your module information, your site conditions, um, all the specs for the roof, and then the engineering results. And it tells you both portrait and landscape. Um, so even though you're not, you don't have any portrait modules in here, it does provide what the uh, what the characteristics are. Uh, and then some loading uh, information there, how much it weighs, um, the square footage, et cetera. Okay, so that's our first original, or our first uh, simple project. So let's see here. So let's go back, and I'm going to um, go back to Snap and Rack website. I'm going to create a new, um, going to create a new job here. Uh, I'm just going to do whatever comes in here. All right, so we'll use a different module for this one. We'll use a QCell 335. Go with 2018 IVC. We're going to change the snow load uh, up to 40. We're going to go with uh, 120 miles an hour, or 130 mile an hour winds. So this might be more like New Jersey or something. And let's go with the 16 inches on center. It's going to be comp shingle again, because that's all we got. Uh, we're going to stick with the black flashing uh, aluminum. We are going to stagger the roof attachments. We're using solar edge. We want a junction box uh, S. And one for subarray is good. Wire manage it auto calculate. Uh, I'm not going to add any of this extra stuff. Um, not really that important. Configure arrays. And yes, I accept the liability. Okay, so our next array is going to be we're going to have multiple arrays here. So let's start with this one. This is going to be in portrait. And I remember the last one we did was in landscape. Uh, Portrait is a little harder to install um, because it uh, you just have to sometimes you have to reach further under the module to deal with wire management and other things like that. Um, but it's it doesn't necessarily portrait even though the portrait uh, spans are shorter like 48 versus 72 inches, uh, so it doesn't use more attachments. It actually a lot of times it ends up using fewer attachments. So if that's what you're worried about, a portrait array is maybe the way to go. So it'd be something to experiment with. Okay, so our first array is uh, two by four. Here we go. Two by four, they're in portrait. This roof pitch is, again, we're just, we're gonna go 28 degrees. So now we can see our attachment spacing. So in portrait, we're at 32 inches. Landscape, we're at 64. Um, it's not as, as big as it was, but remember we're also, um, we got a lot of snow and a lot of wind in there. Okay, building height is uh, less than 30. That's a, so it's a residence. Uh, I did see, if we go back here and look, um, these are really close to the roof peak. So I'm going to say these are going to need ridge mounts. So we'll add the ridge mounts to those. Um, and we're not needing that. Okay. So here we go. Um, also, when they're up there like that, right, uh, 
these are going to be in a different zone. Looks like this one's going to be in a corner zone, and these ones will be edge zones. Which one was which? Hold on, I've turned around here. Okay. I turn my head upside down. So this one was a corner, and these, remember I, I click one, and then I go to the other side, I shift, hold shift down and click it, and I get all of them. These are going to be edge zone. Okay. Now let's validate and see what happens. Okay, you can see that in the edge zones, we've got a reduction in spans. Every, they're on every 16, okay? Um, and in the corner zone, we're still okay with our cantilever here. And then in the area where it's still the interior modules, um, they've gone to the, you know, every, um, you know, every 32 inches. Okay, now we also have two arrays for this one. So we're gonna add an array and we have to remember what it is. So this is this array here. So I'm gonna put this gap in, but I'm gonna I'm gonna count a module here uh, when I do my count to create this array. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So two rows of 15. Sorry, my dog's barking. Uh, and these again are going to be in portrait. And these also need ridge mounts. Okay. And start. So there we are. Um, and this first one is one, two, three, four, five, six. Remove. And sorry, I can't remember exactly what it looked like. That's what I thought. Okay. Okay, so we're looking something like this. Um, if I felt like I had to, I could, you know, I could take this and say one, two, three, you know, move it over. One, two, three. Okay, so let's validate this just to take a look at it. Wow, look at all those. There's a lot of attachments in there. Now the top row also was, um, these were all edge if I was right here. Let me go back to this, um, take a look here. Yeah, these, are all, these are all edge and we've got two corners in the corner, an edge here and an edge here. Okay. Okay, making them edge, making a corner. This one was also an edge. This one was also an edge. Okay, so those are our two, uh, we have two arrays. Remember, we can jump back and forth. Here's the first array, here's the second array. If we wanna add a third array, we can keep going up to 10 arrays or more. Um, we can validate it. Oh, we have an error. This is good. Okay, where's our error? Oh, look, we have a lot of errors. Too bad I can't zoom in. Um, could be that we need to move things. So we move things over like three, right? So if we just go one over and one over, let's see how that did. Oh, that fixed it. So every time you hit validate, it will try with given the spans or the spaces that are in there and the array, it'll try to find, it'll actually shift the array around to try to find a, a place for it to land on the rafters. So it will continue to try that. So that's why I only moved these over like one, even though there were errors over here, it actually reset everything. It shifted things around until it could find a happy place. All right, so there's our two arrays. We can calculate our bill of materials. Um, now it gives you, of course, it gives you subarray one and two, and the whole bill of materials thing. It gives you uh, subarray one, subarray two layout. That's a little hard to read, clearly. All right, so uh, I'm not going to do Excel. I'm just going to go to the uh, PDF, and here we are again. All that same information. Our first array and our second array. Again, that's that's 
going to be hard to read and something that complicated. So if this were me creating this um, just as a quick build of materials, I would have done it this way. But if I were wanting um, better information, I probably would have done these as two separate arrays and had three arrays total. Um, that would have provided a larger image for me. All right, and finally, um, the last one we're going to do for an array is um, is mixed orientation. So this is something you can do with the RL tool, RLU tool. Sorry. So again, we're going to go back to uh, we're going to start at the website configurator RL Universal. Now I want some panels on my vacation home. And I'm going to go with LG. And there I'm going to go with the biggest ones I can get. Okay, some 365s. I'm feeling good. Um, again, uh, building code. The last one we did with this 2018, we're going to stick with 2015. Um, this is uh, up in the mountains for me, so I'm going to choose a, a bit of a snow load and a little bit of a wind load, but nothing terrible. Um, every 24 inches, comp shingle, uh, not changing my, my. Um, actually, I'm going to go with the black galvalume just for fun. Not going to stagger the roof attachments. I think with the last job, we when staggering the roof attachments, I think added a lot to it because there was such, it was so tight. Um, I'm using solar edge. I want to junction boxes. I don't need a big one because this is not going to be a big array. Um, one per sub array, auto calculate. Again, I'm not adding any of this other stuff. Um, configure arrays, continue. All right, now we, are, we have three rows total. Looks like the preliminary one, the easiest way to do this would be start in portrait. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. three rows, six in portrait. Now notice that we have, um, notice that we have 48 and 72 for portrait and landscape. So this is gonna, this will show up, um, this will show up in, uh, in the tool when we get there. And building heights less than 30. I don't want ridge mounts. I'm not doing the hip or valley. I can start. Okay, so. Remember the first two rows were just uh, a normal rectangle, but the bottom row was um, in landscape. So I'm going to start here. I could just rotate one at a time, right? And then I can actually take this, and then there's this placement. It says left or right, but actually it's up and down too, right? So I can move it up and down. Um, but I'm going to I want to change them all to landscape. I'm going to rotate them, okay? And again, you, you know, they push each other out of the way or back and forth. Okay, and I think there were three, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm going to remove those. And three, okay. But they're kind of in the wrong spot. So I'm going to select them all. I'm going to place them up. I'm going to shift them over. Now the shifting moves them six inches. All right, now you notice that this is a little off now. You can see it's like not quite lined up right. So if I, let me see what happens if I validate. If I validate, eh, whatever I do, that'll end up working. Okay, um, if I wanted to do this differently, um, I would probably do, I'd reset this, oops, what was it, it was three rows of, what was it, six? at 20. Okay, and portrait. 
Now, if I wanted these to line up on that side, I would probably turn, I would probably turn these three, rotate them, remove, Oh, didn't let me do that. Hold on. Oof, I messed up there. So sorry. Okay. I'm going to jump through and not do anything here. Sorry if I'm jumping through, just getting back to where we were. Okay. All right, so, oops, array details. Okay, I chose the wrong one, Look, portrait, save. Okay, let's see here. So let's try removing these. So sometimes you have to go back and kind of do different things to try to get things to line up. Um, I'm gonna shift that way. I'm just trying to get them to line up. See if this does anything. Oh, didn't do anything different, all right. placement. Now I'm going to shift them back over. Ah. Oh, look, see, I can bring this one back now. Because right, I couldn't shift it over far enough. Remember, this one got like, uh, this one, this ghost module here, got too far where it wouldn't shift. It wouldn't shift because this module was going off the screen. That's why I wouldn't do that. All right, so let's uh, rotate, oops, rotate this one, rotate, placement, shift back over, okay. So this is pretty close, it's not exact, but um, but when we validated this, it's a little different than the one we had before, just remember the one we had before kind of like brought it right up to the edge, I think it's because we had more snow load. All right, so let's move forward. We validated it. We're going to move forward to our build materials. Um, I, I'm not going to take a, any time to kind of go through this stuff here. Um, we're going to jump into the PDF and see what it looks like. All right, again, all the information we put in here. Um, And you can see they're not quite lined up, but there's no reason that you can't move this over, right? This 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 uh, lower piece can obviously be slid over. That's not going to be a problem. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay, so back to our tool. All right, so. Um, Uh, from anywhere in our from our anywhere in our tool, you can always just jump to one of the other places on our website. All right. Um, also, there's going to be some more information like where to buy materials if you're not sure where to buy them. Um, if you need to go back a page, you can go back a page either with this type of thing, configure arrows, or you can uh, configure arrays, which brings you back to the previous page. Or you could also use the back arrow. Um, these numbers here tell you where you're at in the process. Um, trying to think if there's anything else I need to cover. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, but right now I'm going to quickly go through um, where to find things uh, about this system. One thing you can always do is you can always just type something into the search engine and it'll bring up uh, information or bring up links to different parts of our website where you can find more information. Um, but we're going to just jump into the resources tab here. Okay, now, um, of course, today we're working with RL Universal. Um, you can look at our product catalog, which has all the parts uh, and um, and some, some descriptions and images. Here's all the brochures, um, sales brochure, wire management solutions, uh, array edge screen, then uh, installation manuals. Um, we have, you know, not only RL system, but we also have installation manuals for junction boxes and MLP kits and comp support, uh, sorry, conduit support. And then we get into our structural engineering letters um, and they're listed out by state. 
Um, we have a 2018 building report and a 2015 report. Okay, remember they those are because there's two different uh, the the older code used a, a different um, a different uh, structural engineer's code. Okay, so we had the product. You could also filter it out like this. Okay, we got product catalog. We have brochures, installation manuals, structural engineering letters. Right for every state, all 50 states. We have data sheets. Now, data sheets is uh, another place where you can get a closer look at what some of these things are. For instance, the universal um, mount. This mounts onto the flash track, but you can see uh, it tells you a little bit about uh, you know what dimensions you're you're going to be looking at and what you're working with, and and it gives you a little more information on where where things go. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Um, also, system drawings. Um, you might find these helpful. Um, you got component details. This is the flash track and the flashing, and this is the mount, and it can slide up and down. It's showing it there, uh, and then all the different pieces. Okay. Um, and lastly, we are sorry, not lastly, but we also have technical bulletins. And these would be um, fire classification, basically saying that uh, the RL Universal uh, meets the fire class, uh, class A fire classification for uh, type one and two modules. And then videos, finally, where we've got um, different videos of installing parts, especially the RL roof mount system. These are good. These are great videos to kind of get a better idea um, of how things go together. Um, also, the installation manual clearly is something you should be very familiar with, um, and uh, wire management. Uh, these are all really great uh, videos, for, you know, for information on how to make a system look really nice. It's really, you know, for us, it's important that the system looks good. Um, you know, you don't want wires hanging down, and and you don't want it to look unprofessional. And with that, I think. I think we're done. Um, Jill, if you're with me, is there? Uh, do we have any questions out there? Let's see. Okay, questions. So, not seeing any questions coming through right now. Um, we can give everyone a minute or two to type them. Um, just a reminder, everyone. Uh, Type your questions in the um, questions box on the GoToWebinar uh, dashboard there that you should have, um, and we can answer them. Uh, if you don't have any questions right now, a great way to follow up is through uh, the website. You can reach out to us at our contact at Snap and Rack website, or I'm sorry, email address, or um, Barry, if you want to go to the next slide, um, uh, a great way to reach out to us is also at uh, Barry's email address there. Um, also, uh, you can follow up with us on any of our social media channels. Uh, we're active on all of those platforms with um, a very quick response time. Again, contact at snapinteract.com. That is a great way to get a hold of us as well. Um, with that, uh, I'm not seeing questions, so I'll go ahead and end today's webinar. Barry, thank you for um, your time today. That was a great um, demo of our configuration tool. And have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everybody.